All right guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate and measure with a standard micrometer. If you do any sort of machining or engine rebuilding or anything like that, um, this is a pretty common tool that you might have in your shop. So um, it's a pretty good idea to just get to know it well and learn how to use it properly. The one I have here is just a pretty cheap version that you can get at like Harbor Freight or something like that. There are much more expensive versions that someone that's a machinist or someone like that would be using. So I uh, just wanted to point that out that the one that I'm using as an example here is a fairly cheap micrometer. It does, however, provide accuracy out to one ten thousandths of an inch, which is enough for most DIY guys like myself or you that might be doing a project at home. All right, so first let's start off with calibration. Um, this one here, uh, this is a one to two inch model. And the way we wanna calibrate one like this is there is a piece that it comes with that is a calibrated one inch long uh, metal rod that you can stick into the micrometer and then check to see whether or not we're exactly on one inch. And the way we wanna verify that is we wanna look and make sure that both zero marks, the one here on the uh, thimble and the one on the sleeve are lined up. And you can see in my case here, if you can't see that, I'll take a picture and, and uh, put it after this clip here, that they're slightly off. So we'll make it a little bit of adjustment here to make sure that's right on. All right, and the way we wanna adjust the calibration is using the tool that's provided with these micrometers. And there's a hole on the other side of the sleeve here. Oops that the, the tool inserts into and that allows you to rotate that in either direction to make sure that the zero marks line up. So again, we'll put the uh, calibration piece back in. And we need to go, the direction I need to go in will be this way. It's just a really slight amount that it was off, so it'll just be a real slight adjustment. And it looks like that did it, so I'm gonna show you there if you can see that. That's pretty simple for the calibration. That's really all there is to it. Like I said, there's a piece here. I think um, some of the smaller ones, like the zero to one inch, let me grab that one real quick. We'll use that as an example real quick too. I don't, they don't usually require this piece. Yeah, so here's the zero to one inch that comes in this set. And there is no piece like that, the calibration piece like that for this. Um, you just file them out and then compare the measurements there. And you can see this one's pretty much spot on, so there's no adjustment I need to do on that one. The two to three inch is done just like the one to two, except there's a two inch long piece that gets inserted in for the calibration, just like that. And that one's also right on. All right, so how do we read one of these things? Let's go ahead and uh, take a, an example measurement and we'll go through that. All right, so a little bit more about the measurement scale. Uh, like I said, this is the one to two inch micrometer. So when we look closer at the scale, we start out at zero here. And when you start out at zero, that would be the one inch mark, like I mentioned earlier, the one you're calibrating. So you can also see that there's a bunch of short lines on here. And each one of those short lines represents 25 thousandths. So whenever you're taking a measurement, when you can see that they're visible to the left of the thimble, you will you'll will count those as your measurement. That's unless it hasn't come around, like I show right here, and passed the zero mark at that point. Then you wouldn't count it. We'll see more about that in one of the examples that I use later. So what you would do then is whenever you take your measurement, you're gonna start off with your one inch, because you know you're past one inch, and then your next for the tenths of an inch will be whatever numbers are visible on here. So in this case here, what I'm showing now is a one, so it would be 1.1. And then we have one visible short line, which would be another 25 thousandths. And then what you do after that is you would count for another 20, uh, 15 thousandths here because that's what's lined up with the line. You would either use what's ever lined up or the next closest one below on the line. And then for your very final measurement, that would be the 10 thousandths you look at the vernier scale here and you choose whatever one has the two lines lining up, which in this case, it's gonna be down here at the one. So you would write down the left number in the 10,000th place, 
We'll cover that in the next example. All right, so what we're gonna use for an example is a small engine crankshaft that I have. And we're gonna take a measurement off of that, which has a spec of somewhere between 1.5745 and 1.5749 inches. Part of this crankshaft that I'm talking about is right here. So let's go ahead and take our measurement. I'm gonna tighten it down with the ratchet close here so we don't over tighten it. I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth to make sure you're at a good spot. And before you pull it off, go ahead and lock it so it doesn't move on you. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Like I said earlier, we already know we're gonna be starting at with 1.0000 inches because we're using a one to two inch micrometer. We have the five visible here. So we're gonna add an additional 0 0.5 inches. Now, the short lines, like I mentioned earlier, are each 25 thousandths. We have three visible, but like I said before, this one hasn't passed the zero, so we can only count two of those. So we're gonna add an additional 50 thousandths. But then we're gonna add, since we're coming around here, we're at 24 thousandths on this one, since that's slightly below the line. So we'll add an additional 24 thousandths. Now moving over to the vernier scale, we'll again look for where those two lines lined up, which is where the two is, and then we're gonna add two ten thousandths of an inch onto there. And when we add that up, we end up with 1.5746 inches, which is right slightly above the minimum spec we need for that piece of the crankshaft. All right, so let's just do one last example on the same crankshaft. Uh, we'll measure the rod journal. Let me move these papers over a little bit. So the spec for our rod journal is gonna be find it here on the paper. That is 1.4990 to 1.5 inches. So let's go ahead and take our measurement. Do the same thing. We're going to tighten it down with the ratchet closed until we're in a good spot. So again, we have our 1.000 inches. We have the five showing, but like our other example, it, it hasn't wrapped around yet. So we're not gonna be able to add that, that five. So what we'll have to do instead is we're gonna add the four and then 75 thousandths for the short lines that are visible and then our closest number below our horizontal line here is 19. So we'll add an additional 19 thousandths. And then look at our vernier scale. And it looks like our closest number is seven. So we'll add an additional seven thousandths.
When we add this up, we get 1.4947. And that is actually slightly under the minimum. So in this case, my crankshaft is out of spec. Both of these examples ended up being a little bit tricky because of how it didn't come around past the zero point on the last uh, short line on both of the measurements. And on this one, it was in the case of the five. Um, once you've passed that, it's usually a little bit easier. You'll just be able to add up the number of short lines for 25,000 each, and then you would just add on whatever is on the thimble here in addition to that for the, uh, in the thousands place as well. All right, I hope that was helpful in showing you guys how to calibrate and take measurements with a micrometer. Um, it's not hard, like I said, it can be a little bit tricky here and there. You just gotta pay attention and keep track of your numbers well, and it's a good tool to have around. Thanks for watching.